quick start product listing. In this lesson you're going to learn how to set up a basic product listing before you even receive your inventory. So the reason we are doing this is to create a listing for our product. And we need to create our listing so we receive our FNSKU number. This is the way that Amazon identifies a product as unique to a particular seller. And we need the FNSKU for shipping and potentially for our packaging too. However, there are more reasons for doing this. Firstly, adding your product now will trigger any hazmat review that your product may incur. Now, there is nothing to worry about, but it is better to trigger this now before your inventory is on the way, because it can take a week or more. It also checks for any potentially gated category or product restriction. Now, this is going to be a very basic listing. We will optimize our listing fully later in the course before the product goes live. We literally want to add the minimum information required to have our listing created. Now, there is no need to upgrade from individual to professional yet. However, we do recommend you upgrade to professional before you order your inventory. So let's go to Amazon and set up our listing. All right, so I've logged into my Seller Central account. And then all we need to do to add our product is to go to Catalog, click on it and select Add Products. And then if you look down towards the bottom left, you'll see a search box but we want the link underneath which says create a new product listing. And then all we need to do is click on it. Now when we get to this point, we can either use the search box and find a category to locate the category for our product, or we can actually do it below. It's easiest by far to use the box. So the example I'm gonna be using is a bike pump. Now this is not a product I recommend you go after, it's just for the purposes of showing you how everything works. So I've typed in bike pump, and then I'm gonna click on find category. Now, depending on what product you put in here, you may see a lot of results on the left and none on the right to start with. And then all you need to do is click on one of these categories on the left and it will give you more options. For instance, the product I'm looking to use as an example is a frame mount bike pump. So all I actually need to do is on the right hand side here, click on frame mount bike pumps. But I'm going to click on sporting goods to show you how it works by clicking on the categories on the left. And then you see it gives you all the category options inside that main category. Now I'm just going to click on frame mount bike pumps because that's the subcategory I know I want to look for. However, if you don't see something that's exactly the same as your product, then you just want to choose the subcategory that you think your product fits into the best. There's a very good chance Amazon will move it for you afterwards but you still want to choose the best one, the most applicable one for your product. So as I said, I want frame mount bike pumps, so I just click on that, and then it's gonna open up your product listing. Now, you need to fill in everything that has a red asterisk next to it. First of all, you notice at the top, we've got six tabs, vital info, variations, offer, images, description, and keywords. You'll also notice that two of these tabs, the vital info one, in other words, the one we're on now, and the offer tab, have warning signs next to them. And that's telling you that there are things inside that tab you need to fill in. So I'm gonna start by putting my product name in. Now you just want to put the title of your product in here. We're going into a lot more detail in the next module about your product title and using keywords, but you just want the general name of your product. So I've just typed in frame mounted bike pump. Now for the manufacturer, we're actually gonna use our brand name. So I'm just gonna make up a brand name of Ride Sports. And we're also going to put this in the brand name box too. Now you can ignore the message under here because this is if you have brand registry and at this point you won't have brand registry and it's something we talk about later in the course. Now the last box in red that we need to fill in, remember everything in red, or with a red asterisk next to it we need to fill in, is the manufacturer part number. And as you are the manufacturer, you can put in any number you like here. So I've just put RSBPV0001, and that's just Ride Sports Bike Pump version 0001. But as I said, you can put any number in here you like. Now, as you can see, I've filled in these first four boxes, and if I scroll up slightly, you'll see that the warning sign on vital info is gone because there's nothing else in here to add with a red asterisk next to it. However, I know that once I've filled in the offer, it's going to ask me for my product ID, but we'll come back to that after I do offer. I'm gonna skip variations, because right now I'm not adding any variations, I'm just adding a single product. So I'm gonna click on offer. Now it's telling you you can skip this, but we recommend you don't. You want to fill this information in. Now your seller SKU, Amazon will create one for you if you leave this blank, but I suggest you actually fill it in yourself. And remember, we're building a brand, so it's always useful to have our own SKU, in other words, identifier, to make it easier for us 
to see what's going on inside our account. But it's not something you really need to worry about all that much till you start adding more products in the future. But I'm gonna put a very similar number in to the one I use for the manufacturer part number. So I'm gonna put RS for my brand, Ride Sports. I'm gonna put what the product is, bike pump, BP. And then I'm just gonna put a number of zeros in and a one. In other words, this is the first product in my brand. You can use your own naming format, it's completely up to you. But once you fill that in, you want to look at condition, you want to click on select, and you want to select new. It's very important. You must select new. We're not selling anything else but a new product. And then the price. Don't worry about this, you're not gonna get held to it. I'm just gonna put 19.99, and there it has, it's saved it. You can see the vital info, I've got this warning sign, and I know what that is, that's my UPC number, and I'm gonna get back to that. But this is critically important, fulfillment channel. You must make sure you check the second option, which is, I want Amazon to ship and provide customer service for my items if they sell. In other words, FBA. First option is for FBM, when you would ship the products yourself. So we want the second option. Now I've selected that, so I'm gonna go back to Vital Info because it's asking me for it. And if I scroll down, you'll see it's asking me for the product ID. So I'm gonna click on Select and select UPC. And then I'm gonna go and grab the UPC number that I got from Nationwide. Now, if you decided to go down the GS1 route, that's fine. You want to put your GS1 UPC in here, but I'm gonna use the one from Nationwide. Now, as you discovered in the previous lesson about UPCs, Amazon have been suggesting that you should have a GS1 UPC code only. However, as I also said in that lesson, we've seen no evidence whatsoever of Amazon actually requiring GS1. Now, this might change in the future. Amazon do change the way they do things. But as of right now, a UPC code bought from one of our recommended resellers, in other words, Nationwide, for instance, work perfectly well. Now something that is new that's happened in the last six weeks to two months is when you create your listing, you do get a warning message telling you about GS1 and UPCs. Now even though that does appear, again, for the last six weeks, we're not seeing any evidence that Amazon are enforcing GS1s. So it's still your business decision which one you have. But it's another good reason why we create this listing as soon as possible, just in case they do change but I'm gonna grab my UPC number and you can see the warning signs come up. The validity of a product ID is checked against the GS1 databases. If your product ID is not registered with GS1, then the linked ASIN will be suppressed. Now, as I said, we're not seeing this happening, but it may happen in the future. When it comes to Amazon, we simply don't know. But if anything changes, we will let you all know as soon as possible. But I'm gonna paste in the UPC code and I'm actually gonna click on got it. So I'm acknowledging that I understand. And as you can see, it's accepted everything and I've got no warnings. Now there is something else we're gonna fill in. Now this is actually category dependent. So it might not appear in this listing, but if it doesn't, I'm gonna show you where to include it. But just running across quickly, Images, we'll cover this in the next module. You don't need to actually upload an image yet, but if you happen to have one of your products, then by all means, just click on the choose file and upload it. And next is description. This is where we're going to be putting our product description. And again, that's gonna be in the next lesson. We don't need to do it now. And finally, keywords. And again, we're gonna be using search terms, but once again, we're gonna be covering that in the next lesson. Now, the option I was looking for is the product or package dimensions. Now, at this point, if you don't see more options, you can actually click on this tab in the top right-hand corner of the box called Advanced View. If you click on it, you can see you get a lot more options, but you don't need to worry about them right now. The only thing we're interested in with the Advanced View is this more details. I'm not interested in any of these boxes right now, but I am gonna scroll down and what we're looking for is this, package dimensions, and also the weight that comes underneath it. Now, while filling this in now is not required, we recommend you do it now, because if you forget to do it when you do your full listing, then Amazon will automatically, by default, select your product as being oversized, because you haven't told them how big it is. So we recommend you do that first. Now, I don't know the exact measurements of the bike pump, because I'm using it as an example, so I'm putting eight, four, and three. However, you can just go and look at the primary product or the, any of the competing products and use their measurements for now. And then I'm gonna select inches. And then for the weight, I'm gonna say it's a pound. I've got absolutely no idea how much a bike pump weighs, but again, if you're not 100% sure, you can go and look at your primary or competing products, or you can even ask your supplier. So I'm gonna click on select again, I'm gonna choose pound. And that's it, that's all I need to fill in for this basic listing. So I'm gonna scroll down, 
all the way to the bottom and click on save and finish. Now it does take anything up to two or three minutes for it to go through, but then you're gonna see your listing is being created. This process may take up to 30 minutes. Please check back and change your listing to fulfill by Amazon at that time. So what it's actually done, it's created this as an FBM listing, which is fine, because we can go back in and change it. You can see here it's telling you how to do it. Change your listing on the Manage Inventory page, select your product, select Change to Fulfill by Amazon. And we're gonna do that in one second, but I'm just gonna click on Continue. Now I've blurred out this product underneath, but this is the one I've just added. You can see here, Frame Mounted Bike Pump. Now where the available box is, you'll see that I can put in the number of available products. That's a classic indicator that this is actually fulfilled by merchant. Remember, we want FBA, we want fulfilled by Amazon. And to change that, I'm gonna click on the arrows to the right of Edit, and then simply select change to fulfill by Amazon. Now, don't panic. This can throw up an error message and we'll see if it does it with this product, but it's nothing to worry about. So I'm gonna click on change to fulfill by Amazon and that's gonna bring up this page. And you can see there, there's our merchant SKU that we created, frame mounted bike pump, currently fulfilled by merchant. So we want it to be fulfilled by Amazon. But really important before we even look at the two yellow tabs is this box here, barcode type you must make sure it says Amazon barcode. Now by default, it should be Amazon barcode, but make sure you check it. If it says manufacturer barcode, you need to change it to Amazon barcode. It's critically important you do that. I can't stress enough how important that is, because if you don't, it can cause all kinds of problems trying to get it changed. But then all we're gonna do right now is we're gonna click on convert only, because we haven't got any inventory. So I click on convert only. Now, depending on your category again, you may get this required information, add dangerous goods information. So click on it and you'll get all this information. So read through it. First of all, battery information. Is this product a battery or does it utilize batteries? You want to click on no. Obviously, if it does, then you want to click on yes and fill out any of that information. But then I'm gonna scroll down Product regulation information. Is this product considered a dangerous good or hazardous material regulated for transportation, storage, and or waste? This essentially is hazmat. Now, even if you check no here, they still might put a hazmat review, which is why we do this listing when we do, in other words, now. But I'm gonna click on no, and then click on submit. Before I do that, if you're unsure, look at the details above here, look at their guides, and if you're still not sure, you can always post in the ASM community and we'll help you out. But once you've done this, you just wanna click Submit, and there you can see Completed, and now we can save and continue. And there we are, and there's the error. Now, as I said, it's nothing to panic about. It's just because it takes a little bit of time to kick in on the FBA Inventory tab. And what we can do is just go up to the top left and click on Inventory. There's no need to select any options, and your page will load, and there we go. You can see I've no longer got the option to put a number of the items available, and that's because it's now FBA. You may need to wait a couple of minutes and refresh this to get it to change. When you first look at this, it might still have the numbers in the box, which means it hasn't gone through Amazon's system yet. But that is all you need to do. We've created our quick product listing. And remember, we will be going into great detail on how to improve this listing later. But just one more thing I quickly want to show you and that is if we go up to settings and, and put your cursor over settings and you want to come down and click on fulfillment by Amazon. And this is just something you want to make sure of. You want to come down here and where it says repackaging settings, you want to make sure that it says repackage unsellable customer returns is disabled. Now it should be disabled by default, but it's just something you want to come and check. What this means is that if Amazon gets a return, they're not gonna try and repackage it and send it out if they think it's acceptable. More often than not, their staff are not qualified to say whether a return product can go out to a new customer or not. And the last thing you want is a customer receiving your product and thinking it's secondhand. But again, it's nothing to worry about. But if you see this enabled, you want to go and click on edit and change it to disabled. But that's it, that's everything you need to do to get your quick product listing set up. So what's next? So now you've learned how to create your basic listing. In the next lesson, you're going to learn how to design your product packaging. Your action step is to create your basic listing for your product. But that's it for this lesson, take care.